Welcome to AETCM. Today we are going to discuss a case about a 63 year old male who was brought to her ER with history of one week fever with myalgia and outside dengue NS1 positive. Can you begin sir? Okay. So uh, this uh, <coughs> patient was uh, his having a history of one week fever with tiredness, myalgia and outside dengue NS1 positive with and was referred to our hospital because of low plane accounts. What are the symptoms of dengue fever? Dengue uh, mostly will be having a, a dengue fever. and dengue both are same. Mm -hmm. Some says dengue, some says dengue. dengue. Fever, then uh, retroorbital pain, headache, back pain, myalgia, uh, arthralgia. Uh, severe back pain is one of the common finding. Breakbone fever Break type bone. of fever. Then many patients can have diarrhea. So that is also a very common finding. Some patients can have rashes. Very rarely complications can occur like uh, cardiac. Uh, problem, neurological problem, liver problem, that can occur in very few individuals. Most of the time, it's a self-limiting disease, high degree fever, back pain, uh, abdominal pain, diarrhea, some thrombocytopenia. This is a common finding. So, this guy was having low platelet counts and so was referred here. So, on initial assessment, <coughs> the patient was conscious but agitated. And the airway, error was patent, he was talking and following the commands and coming to the breathing but air under was bilaterally equal, respiratory rate of 22 per minute and saturation of 98% maintained in room air. In circulation, BP was 130 over 70 mmHg with pulse rate of 90 per minute and disability wise, GCS was full score and pupil was 3 mm bilaterally equally reacting. And uh, temperature, exposure temperature was febrile and uh, GRBS was 387. Okay, sugars are high. Sugars are he, high. He was never a diabetic. He was a non case of type 2 diabetes. And uh, coming to the agents, uh, we did a VBG wherein which uh, we found that he was having creatinine of 9.36. Okay. And uh, other than that, VBG was showing no acid based derangement, lactate was 2.1. Hmm. And the ECG was showing a normal sinus rhythm. We went ahead with our uh, further evaluation. Uh, we sent for routine lab investigation and we uh, given him a, a small dose of uh, human atropid uh, for the high insulin and high sugar. High, uh, high sugars and uh, we ended with the routine investigation. So, when you are giving insulin in a patient with the renal failure, what are the precautions you take? Action of insulin will be longer. It will be prolonged. prolonged. Normally, insulin is excreted out through the kidneys. If the kidneys are damaged, then excretion can be prolonged. Okay. So, that we have to keep in mind. If you are dialyzing the patient, then that will be dialyzable. Okay. Otherwise, the patient can go to hypoglycemia. Suppose somebody is taking 20 units of insulin at home, his creatinine was normal. Suddenly, because of some infection, if the creatinine increases, then you have to reduce the dose of insulin. That is very important. Okay. So, coming to the secondary survey, he was a known case of type 2 diabetes, systemic hypertension and CKD, was on tablets, uh, tab silnidipin, uh, prasopacin, nebicard, sodium bicarbonate, BD and uh, atorvastatin with the human uh, insulin and human mixture. Okay. So, he, is, he was taking these uh, tablets uh, regularly. And the history is that he was having complaints of a high grade fever with uh, with the chills and rigor for the past one week intermittent fever associated with generalized tiredness and my myalgia. And he was also having uh, decreased urine output later on and uh, purpuric rashes over the bilateral lower limbs. He went to a nearby hospital and where in which he was found to have a dengue NS1 positive and he was admitted there. During the course of stay in the hospital, his platelet counts were uh, having a dropping uh, sensation, dropping trend with the platelet count reaching up to 4000. What is this dengue NS1 and dengue IgM difference? Dengue NS1, uh, it, it will be uh, showing the NS1 antigen. So, it is a test for test antigen. antigen. So, it is a test for the virus. Mm. Okay. IgM? The antibody. It is against antibody. So, what is it? Time gap between this antigen positivity and antibody positivity. IgM antibody will be positive after 5 days. Or okay, 5 to 7 days is normally a response of antibody will occur, and after 7 days, most of the cases, IgM will be positive. Okay. Before that, anti antigen will antigen be positive. Will be positive. Okay. So, NS1 is the investigation of choice in first week, IgM is the investigation of choice in second week. 
here and uh, from the outside hospital they have uh, given a history of their transfused over 17 pints of rdp rdp and still his plate account was not improving so he was what is the plate account here uh, on reaching our hospital his plate account was 7000 7000 how do you confirm that 7000 uh, manual counting manual counting peripheral smear manual, manual counting, counting is a must because clumping of the platelet can sometimes uh, create problem in a machine okay so 7000 should be confirmed and you have to give platelets what is the difference between rdp and single don rdp is random uh, donor uh, platelets the other one is single, single donor one. plate what is the main difference yeah, the thing is random donor as name says the, the platelet will be from a multiple person whereas in single donor platelet the whole platelet will be gathered from a single person and the rdp uh, the rise of platelet will be nearly 1000 per pint whereas in sdp we can get up to 4000 per what are the other differences then Chance of immune reactions. So, antigenicity is more with RDP. Suppose you are transfusing for ITP. ITP is a chronic condition. You have to give repeated transfusion. In that, if you are giving RDP as a regular platelet transfusion, there will be high chance for antibody production against each type of, uh, <coughs> uh, per each person's platelet. So, that large number of different antibodies are formed in the body. And next time when you transfuse, that will be killed or destroyed immediately whereas if you are giving a sdp single donor platelet only one type of antibody will be produced so that uh, next time if you transfuse someone else platelet that also will uh, survive okay so that is very important chronic transfusion only sdp and acute condition like dengue and all rdp is okay cost wise uh, which is better uh, RDP, is okay. rdp is lesser costly other one is very costly uh, we transfused him uh, at that point with an SDP mm. and his uh, play accounts over the next day uh, shoot up to 32,000. Okay. And further, uh, we have started him, uh, we, we sent for the routine. How long this 32,000 will remain in your body? Uh, one day. One day. Maximum uh, platelet, transfused platelet will remain one day and our own platelet will stay for? Seven. Seven days. Okay. So that if, when you learn about aspirin action, you learn. Aspirin you are taking, okay. Now, uh, previously it was told uh, you have to stop aspirin for 7 days before doing any procedure. Now it is only for 2 days. Why it is like that? If you stop it today, day after tomorrow you can do most of the procedures. Previously it was told only after 7 days. That is because platelets stay for 7 days. That was the concept. Now it is changed because of, uh, every day new platelets are forming. So, 50% uh, more than 50% of your platelet will be new. So, if you stop today, day after tomorrow, is a platelet, a young platelets will be there that can cover your bleeding tendency. Okay. So, further on for uh, additional evaluation, we did a UST abdomen for the patient, and the UST abdomen was showing liver, uh, altered echo chest of the liver. What is the normal platelet destroyed in your body every day, in your spleen? 20, 30% of your normal platelets are destroyed every day in your spleen because they are old. Okay. So, every day 30% is destroyed. So, two days 60% is destroyed. Two days you can have new platelets. So, further evaluation, USG abdomen was taken which was showing CLD features. Okay. Along with, he was a non-drinker and uh, alcoholic. alcoholic and uh, uh, splenomegaly was there and the kidney was showing raised co uh, cortical echogenicity with partially maintained CMD. So what happens in CLD to the platelet? Uh, thrombocytopenia. Why the, what is the reason? Uh, uh, platelet secretion. Uh, uh, sec so spleen when it is normal 30% is destroyed. When it is become double, double is destroyed. Mm -hmm. So in a chronic CLD patient if the splenomegaly uh, like that is uh, that is indicator of splenomegaly is indicator portal, portal hypertension. Then large number of platelets are destroyed every day. On top of this, uh, the patient has developed dengue. Okay. And uh, by that time, we got the uh, blood reports. Blood reports are showing a, a total counts of uh, two point uh, two thousand three hundred with the platelet counts of seven thousand. And uh, other than HP, HP person, uh, HP was ten. Ten. Okay. There was no history of any malina hematemesis, and uh, um, also he was having SGOT of 282 with, with SGPT of 319. Okay. And uh, creatine. Uh, albumin globulin. Al 
Album was 2.9. Globalin was 3.84. So what do you think that album and what happened to album? You want to... Oh. Album in 2.9 no, is very no. high. Total protein itself is low. Yes. So what may be the reason for that? Dengue hepatitis. Either he is a chronic alcoholic liver disease. He can have low, low album. Mm. Or dengue fever induced microvascular leak. Mm. What happened in microvascular leak? What is the cause for shock in dengue fever? Plasma leakage. Leakage. One is uh, uh, vasodilatation and uh, collapse of the mm. intravascular compartment. Second one is vascular leakage. And vascular leakage is indicated by low albumin. Okay. So both are possible. We don't know why the albumin is low. Sometimes it is due to the chronic liver disease itself. Because total protein itself is low. Okay. And... Uh, Further, uh, urea and creatine was elevated. Urea of 217 and creatine of 8.69. Okay. And so, uh, what is this? Chronic renal failure or acute on chronic or acute renal failure? Acute on chronic. Is acute already on having renal C C C CKD. Is, and now, because of the fever infection, it has aggravated. Its baseline creatine was 5. 5. And which uh, showed up to 8.6. And we sent for... Uh, Ferritin also. Mm. Uh, ferritin came out to be 7600. Okay. What is the importance of ferritin here? Ferritin is an in inflammatory marker mm. and also uh, in hemolysis, uh, ferritin increases. HLS. 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 Okay. HLS. So, ferritin is a, a acute phase reactant. Any inflammation it will be increased. A very high levels indicates HLH, HLH or macrophage activation syndrome, mm. especially in a case like dengue fever. And we send for... What are other criteria for... HLH? HLH uh, we should have uh, elevated ferritin, then uh, triglyceride should be elevated. What is the triglyceride here? Uh, here the uh, triglyceride was uh, 182. 182, not slightly higher, slightly but not, uh, not not very high. Uh, criteria not fitting. Okay. And also we sent for the D-dimer and the fibrinogen also. Okay. D-dimer was 3.58 with fibrinogen of 469. Okay. Fibrinogen is high here. Mm. What it indicates? It is an acute phase reagent. Fibrinogen is an acute phase reagent. But uh, normally when the patient go to DIC, fibrinogen level should be very low. What will be the low cutoff point? What is the normal cutoff point? Uh, Less than 150 uh, is abnormal. Less than 1 lakh is an alarming level. Okay. So here it is 450. That shows very high levels of inflammation. That's all. And uh, PTINR was uh, 0.83 with the APT to 41. Okay. And other than that, uh, his ha he was having a CRP of 17, Procal was 1.1 and the LDH was 655. Hmm. LDH is very high, that indicates what? Uh, hemolysis. 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 It indicates hemolysis. Okay. And uh, so, we started him on IV fluids and uh, but as such he was having CKD, uh, we had to give the IV fluids in a Restricted manner also. Okay. And uh, also we have started prophylactic doxycycline was started and uh, dexa, uh, dexamethasone was also given prophylactically. Hmm. And, uh, and after the transfusion of one SDP, his platelet count uh, shoot up to 30, 32,000. What is the cause of uh, platelet destruction in dengue fever and all? It's a immunogenic cause. Hmm. So steroids may be helpful. We cannot tell. 100% steroid will definitely improve. In many patients, you can see they are improving. That's all. But that doesn't mean that it is uh, indicated. And uh, next day, his platelet count improved, sir. Okay. But uh, the thing was, he was having still persisting high, high creatine also. And uh, he uh, he was having a, uh, he was continuing with the agitated behavior. Okay. What is this macrophage activation syndrome? What is that? That is uh, seen in uh, reactive arthritis idiopathy. Macrophage activation syndrome, there are two types. Mm. One is congenital diseases mm. like uh, rheumatological mm. disorder, you can get uh, this one. Other one is infectious diseases, you can get sometimes macrophage activation mm. syndrome. What is the syndrome? Macrophage activation syndrome means what? What is macrophages? Uh, immune related. Macrophages are produced uh, when there is an infection mm. or inflammation. To kill that infection or inflammation or to eat that infection or inflammation. That is a regulated manner, your, your body is producing this a macrophage in a regulated manner. This is a re dysregulated immune response to some infection or inflammation, dysregulated. So, overproduction of inflammatory response. 
ഓക്കെ ദർ ആർ ദ മാക്രോഫേജസ് ആർ മെയിൻ മെയിൻ കൾപ്രിറ്റ് ബിഹൈൻഡ് ദിസ് പ്രോബ്ലം ഓക്കെ ദർ ആർ ഓവർ പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ്ഡ് ആൻഡ് ദർ ആക്ടിവിറ്റീസ് ആർ ഓവർ പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ആൻഡ് ഇൻഫ്ലമേറ്ററി പ്രോട്ടീൻസ് ആർ ഓവർ പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ്ഡ് ഓക്കെ and uh, further uh, during the day his play leg on began to improve mm. on next day his play leg on uh, then or in- increased up to 37000 then 60000 okay and it, it was hovering around how the do you 60, treat 000. macrophage activation syndrome what is the treatment cytosorb cytosorb is uh, for uh, immunosuppression uh, like steroids mm. uh, or any other steroid sparing agent yeah, cytosorb therapy also can be used to filter out the uh, antibodies uh, present in the blood okay they are very costly treatment uh, otherwise you can use steroids Steroid. okay mm-hmm. steroids can control some amount of macrophage activation syndrome okay uh, his uh, platelets was hovering around the 60000 to mark as it was not improving may, okay. maybe because of the cl bp bp was 130 over 80 130 over 80 any other problem he have other than, other than this uh, ckd was main and he was also having a mild hyponatremia also but uh, got resolved during his stay okay so if it is a real cld what would have happened to his uh, ptinr if you are thinking uh, it's a ckd in sorry cld induced problem what would happen to the inr increase so inr increase. No, normally when there is a liver failure or chronic liver disease is slightly elevated not very much maybe 1.3 1.5 here it is 1.03 1.0 means 1 but sir 0.83 sir 0.8 so it's a normal <coughs> value so uh, there is no actual uh, failure of liver so the uh, the problem is mainly dengue fever induced thrombocytopenia and macrophage activation syndrome and uh, splenomegaly induced uh, some amount of thrombocytopenia is seen in splenomegaly itself so that has aggravated the platelet uh, problem and since the ferritin levels are very high we have to think about macrophage activation syndrome but so complete criteria is not there because there is no elevation of the triglycerides okay but uh, ferritin itself is a good marker of macrophage activation syndrome you have to treat with steroid yeah. steroid sparing agents like that and what happened to the patient on discharge on discharge his uh, agitation also restlessness decreased he was became stable and uh, his creatine then came down up to 6 okay dialysis was dialysis was not done no, uh, no. wait uh, only watchful wait and was for okay other than that his what is hepatorenal syndrome mm. hypoperfusion to kidneys selective hypoperfusion of kidneys that will produce reversible renal failure when it will reverse um, only hepatic. with hepatic, hepatic replacement okay only after transplant it will replace otherwise it will not replace here the cre- elevation of uh, creatinine is uh, hepatic renal syndrome or something else it is reversed it is reversed to previous level so it is not a hepatic, hepatic renal syndrome the aggravation of ckd is due to some infection or uh, 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 hypovolemia or something we don't know so that has improved that means it is not hepatic renal syndrome okay anything else no. okay thank you okay.